Levi has it and he's mixing it. So it's taking a little while because Levi is mastering now. Now he's a bootleg. So he gets to it when he can get to it. So, and so it'll, amen. Be, be praying. Be, be praying. AdamandBeliever.com. See, you just a let stink out over the over the congregation. <laughs> I had the joke. Now I gotta tell some more jokes. <laughs> AdamandBeliever.com forward slash pray instead. Listen, don't pray. Look at somebody and say, don't pray that. Don't pray, that. pray this instead. Pray this. Yeah, this is gonna help you. Ooh, wee, this is gonna help you deal with things in prayer i put up a little post on instagram this morning talking about praying without ceasing uh, first thessalonians 5 and 17 it just says those three words pray without ceasing and the devil has made folks think that that means to pray and just keep praying and never stop and that's not what that means it says pray without ceasing means never stop praying there's a difference meaning don't give up on prayer Amen. never stop praying Pray without ceasing. Never cease to pray. Don't stop praying. Amen? We all go through those peaks and valleys where, you know, you go a few more days than normal without praying. Oh, somebody's too safe to comment on that. That's okay. I'm not talking about y'all. talking about the regular humans, not the metas. You pray every day and everybody in the neighborhood here. You okay, good, good for you. I'm talking about sometimes things you just get so down and you get that Elijah complex where you just running in the wilderness and you just land under a juniper tree. God gotta come and feed you and restore you and get you back where you need to be. Amen. Sometimes you put you flat on your back and say, okay, now talk to me. Because he doesn't want you to stop praying. Amen. Look at somebody and say, life happens. I, you know, when I was young, Elder, I just didn't want to go to no church where folks weren't human. And didn't believe that life happened. They believe every time something bad happened, it was the devil. No, sometimes it's life. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes prayers don't work because we keep doing the opposite of what we prayed. Can we be real in the house? That's the kind of church I want to be. Let's be real. So look at somebody and say, don't pray that. Pray this instead. First prayer for husbands. Got any husbands in the house? All right. Husbands, <laughs> don't pray for God to fix your wife. Somebody like, well, then what am I supposed to be praying? What? You bring a scalpel into the prayer room. Got a scaffold in there. Just laid it down. Oh Lord. Cut open. Take her insides out and put a whole brand new inside. Brand new insides. Don't pray. Don't pray for God to fix your wife. Instead, pray that God gives you courage and security to lead her properly. Ain't that good? Pray, listen, for a considerate spirit. It's so easy for men, especially, and don't get offended, but especially if you were raised without your father, it's very easy for you to move into a marriage and want the consideration that your wife should get. So you grew up getting considered by a woman, constantly. So a lot of times your wife don't like you because you want consideration that she should be getting. It's okay, you don't have to clap. Yeah, you're a diva in your house. 
because your mama treated you that way. But it can't be too. That's, that's right. If there's a wife in the house, you can't be right. vain. That's her job. You got to be a man sometimes and suck it up and just suck it up. She made you feel bad. You just have to feel bad. And you have to walk around just feeling bad. But you can't go to her and you always make me feel bad. No, that's what she's supposed to say to you. But you grew up and I get it. That's why we preach it. That's why we're trying to correct it. So pray for that. Pray for a considerate spirit and to express kindness toward her. You know how to be kind. Not saying stuff you can't take back. That's kindness. You tell her, you old watermelon head girl, you got the biggest head I've ever seen. Now she wearing two hats and you... <laughs> Weave everywhere trying to cover it. Why, why you got three, uh, enough for three people? Because I got a watermelon head. You done messed up. Then you come back, I didn't really mean that. And she's like, look. All is her. I was trying to cover it up. You done hurt her. That's, that's not kind. <laughs> I know that's a crazy example, but it's the truth. You can't say that. Now she can tell you that. Yo, watermelon. She somebody call me a watermelon head. I'd be like, well, you partially right. Maybe it's a cantaloupe. I don't know if it's full watermelon. Honeydew, maybe honeydew. But I would get past that. You know what I'm saying? But because my words are the words of a man and an authority in the home, when I say it, it changes her. So. You got to pray against that. Man, I got so many of these, man. Let me hurry up. Love her as Christ loves his church. Women are ready. <laughs> if Jesus called you a watermelon head, your head would turn into a watermelon. <laughs> let, me, let me go to get through this. I mean, it would be permanent. Permanent. <laughs> gotta get through these <laughs> so you love her the way Christ the way Christ loves his church women are reactors she is only reacting to your leadership now you gonna get mad at her and she's reacting to your leadership disclaimer sure there are extreme cases where women are acting under the power of demonic oppression that happens the older I get the more I see it Sometimes your leadership can't fix that. She possessed. But prayer is what? Still needed. It's still necessary. Because if you keep praying, God will show you exactly what the problem is. And you must be man enough to wear the blame if necessary. Because at the end of the day, the blame you got to worry is, well, I did marry her. I did pick her. Pray against insecurity and confusion of roles. Amen. Pray against it. You don't go tell her, I'm the man of this house. You don't have to say that. Go and pray for that. Lord, make me the man of this house. So I don't ever have to say it. Amen. Pray against insecurity. That's what makes you yell and scream that you are the, the man of the house. You're insecure if you have to say it. Just be it. I know I'm preaching. Pray against the spirit of Jezebel and all influences that are operating through her. Do all that can be done to save your marriage. Amen, husbands. Do all that can be done to save your marriage. God will bring resolution on your behalf no matter what the outcome is. 
Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and did what? Jesus did all that he could do to save us. Giving your life is everything. Wives, you knew it was coming. Don't pray for punishment or that God will get his attention. Don't pray that. Lord, get his attention. No, stop his car, Lord. Oh, that's your car. You're going to have to go get him. Stop this car, Lord. No, man, I got to go pick him up. You should have prayed that. No, don't pray for punishment. Don't pray God get his attention, Lord. Show him, let a light at the church fall down on his head. You're just praying. No, never listen. Never use condemnation or emotional hurt to penalize your husband for not being in the condition that you prefer. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. Don't you use emotional hurt. Don't you hurt him with your hurt. You don't weaponize your womanhood. I guess I need to say that again because ain't nobody. You don't weaponize your womanhood, woman. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Ha, amen. Yeah. Oh, you ain't touching me. It's going to be years for you to. <laughs> years? What did he do? <laughs> Pray that God gives you a pathway of understanding with him so he can see how to better treat you and the children. A path. Wait, now listen. Two people that came together was once madly in love. I hope you were. That's why you got married. Madly in love. That means that there is a path there. It may be blocked with a dresser, some chairs, a bed, everything blocking the path, rocks and whatever. But that path is still there because it was once there. Y'all would go in and out talking to each other clearly. So you pray for God to remove all of those obstacles that have gotten in the way of the path. So y'all can open the pathway up again to each other. Are we trying to hurt him? If you love him, you want to help him because hurting him hurts you. Oh, I need to do a marriage retreat. You hold the keys to his heart. And you can win it with the right behavior, according to the Bible. Look, I ain't, ain't nobody going to clap on this one. They, they, they don't like that scripture. You can win him. Now, disclaimer again, some folk crazy. He's crazy when you was dating him. Man, he was crazy. And you married him anyway. You had a baby by him. And he crazy. So some of this stuff ain't going to work. Because he, he's just crazy. I told you we was going to be real. Can we be real? Yeah, so he, he crazy. Yes. So you just, Lord help me deal with crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you hold the keys to his heart. If he was in love with you before, he can be in love with you again. And the right behavior can spark that. Pray against feelings of bitterness and unforgiveness. A lot of times you think he's crazy and he's, it's you. That's the only way to treat you. Boy, I'm just, I'm all up in it today, ain't I? That's, all, that, that's your love language. <laughs> now you grow up in a house where everybody cussed each other out and threw old mad dog bottles at everybody. That's, that's how you grew up, so you want that to happen now. That's your love language. That's how I know he loved me. Bottles flying. But pray against feelings of bitterness and unforgiveness. And some of those run deep. Most of them are deeper than your relationship. He's taking the blame for a relationship you was in before him. That's why we don't do all that team dating and haphazard dating. That junk leave marks. Yeah, and then you treat me, you y'all all reacting off of stuff. It got nothing to do with y'all. 
Pray against all that you saw in your upbringing and every past relationship that created negative feelings toward men in general. So all that you saw, all that happened to you that created negative feelings toward men, pray against those. Amen. Pray against societal reactions and female dominance. Amen. Amen. You ain't no boss in that house if you married. How you the boss and you married to a man? Amen. If the man is in there, he's the boss, according to the Bible. That's what we preach in here. Maybe some folks came to get barbecue and they wandered in here this Sunday. We preach that the man is the head of the woman. He, amen. Like Christ is the head of the church. That's what we preach. So you can't be the boss. So pray against that boss desire. Because if you desire to be the boss, that means you have a problem with men. Yeah. Something happened to you. So pray against what society is trying to do. Pray constantly for submission and sacrifice. If God... Oh, this is going to hurt somebody, but it's going to help you too. If God requires you to sacrifice your own happiness temporarily for his will to be accomplished, then be willing to submit. That's what submission is. You got to sacrifice your own being happy. What is happy? Happy come and go in seasons. That's temporal. That's not one of the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, happiness. No! He's thinking of that Charlie Brown song. Happiness is reading the scriptures. Pray. Everybody's too young. They don't, know, they don't even know Charlie Brown song. Pray against all that you saw and the negative feelings, all of that. Oh, where oh, and if God requires you to sacrifice your own happiness temporary, because it's only temporary, you'll be happy again. Yes. Amen. Some folk get divorced. Why you get divorced? I just wasn't happy. What? Is that a reason? Had you been happy before? Well, yeah. Then you got unhappy before? Well, yeah. And then you got happy again? Well, yeah. Well, you don't see a pattern here? If God requires that, you got to be willing to do it. Blessings, listen, are always at the end of sweet-smelling sacrifices. In the Old Testament, they would burn the meat and do all the things, and then it would go up to God as a sweet-smelling savor and please him. So women, you just need to be sweet. A sacrifice sacrifice and be sweet and watch a blessing come Ooh, the hand claps is thin and out let me move on to the next one first Peter 3 and 1 likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word they also may without the word without the word without the what without the word be won by the what just you talking the right stuff without the word. Right. Honey, you need to read the Bible, boy, because you just ain't treating me right. You can't make him act right without the word? Right. Amen. I know man won't no woman competing the, the Salvation Olympics with him. Oh, I'm a holy woman of God. You got to watch how you talk to me. <laughs> That's gross. Hey, Amen. Don't you ever use God like that. He is not on your side. Oh, I just read what he thinks. I need to go over there. Focus. Some of these folks. Single men, any single men in the house? <laughs> oh, they so jive. Y'all jive. They're like, well, I need to know why I'm, why I'm shouting out. <laughs> I'd like to know the rest before I reveal my current 
stats. I need to know where this is going. <laughs> Single men, don't pray for God to send you a wife. Look at that. Look, they, now they're real confused. First, they didn't say nothing. Now they're like, wait, I've been praying that every day. Nope, don't pray for God to send your wife. Pray for God to help you find one. Because you got to find a wife. Hey, she ain't, no, she's not coming to you. If she come to you, she ain't the one. Because the scripture says, a man that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and then findeth favor. Find, 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 find. You got to find her. Find, find, find her. It's a big difference. Sitting around waiting on one will cause you to grow cynical and lose hope. Because you're supposed to find it. They used to journey miles in the Bible to find one. Daddy will get a yak. And <laughs> take him two yaks and a pony. We're going to exchange this for a woman. he did now give me your daughter here you go take this yak what does a yak do i don't know but it's big yeah and and i mean journey ain't sitting wait to see who was passing by the house oh that's okay but listen seeking god to find one causes you to trust in his guidance now this is where it's important you got to seek god to, to help so he'll help you find one then you build trust in his guidance the one thing god is not going to do is let you pick the wrong one if you depended on him because he can see the future and you can amen amen what you are looking for in a wife changes. Uh-oh. When you get closer to God. God turns you into a prudent man. So you stop judging the situation for the now. And you start looking like God into the future. Prudent. This has to work long term. Man, G. Craig needs to get paid for this, sir. We taking up a love offering. Do we have yellow un envelopes? Yellow envelopes. That's what you call the preaching envelope. It's not an envelope if it's the preaching envelope. It's the envelope. <laughs> he will show you what you really need in place of what is desired. What you thought you needed, you don't need that. He's going to show you what you need for long term. Pray for God to give you a good marriage. See, that's the thing folk don't pray. You praying for a woman, pray for a good marriage. Lord, I want a good marriage. Help me make a good marriage. Then he'll slide that piece in that'll fit it. This is a good marriage. Pray against gamophobia, which is fear of marriage. A lot of young men have that because if you're going on Instagram looking for one, you're going to be scared to marry anybody because they are witches, most of them. Pray against insecurity. That's feelings of not being good enough for a wife. Compromise. That's being unequally yoked. And pray against sabotage. That's finding something wrong in order to prolong the process. You just keep finding stuff wrong with folks. And you end up prolonging the process because there's something wrong with everybody. Yes. Proverbs 18 and 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a what? Good thing. And does what? Obtaineth favor. Has the truth been preached in here? Three slides. All to dismiss. Got about 18 to go. Single women! Single town. That's what we call them. And the older ones is single, single village. And then the next level. 
My mama gave me that look. I ain't messing with her. Single women, never pray for a husband. Uh-oh. You don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. Look at it. You hear that? You feel that? The air just left the building. Are you, why are you praying for a husband? How you know you're ready? How you know you need one right now? How you know you're over the last stuff? Why would you get before God and ask for that without him checking you first? Why don't you ask God? Listen, let me just keep going. Do not make lists, expectations, wishes, hopes, etc. Because they are all based on past experiences, societal norms, and preconceived notions. That's all you got to work with. So you come into God with what you want. You come into God with what you need and what you need him for. You just need him to, to, to get him. Just go get G.I. Joe. But you already know everything. No, 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 no. You come to God to trust him. Trust, look at somebody and say, trust God. Watch this right here. If you hide your life in Christ, you will be found. Amen. It might cost too much. I just dropped myself. If you hide your life in Christ, you will be found. He knows where you are. He's not going to let you waste, go to waste. He knows where you are. You don't have to be thirsty. Plot, scheme, manipulate, or conjure. You the burning sage and stacking crystals and you done went just extreme. And all you got to do is trust him and hide your life in him. So instead of praying for a husband, pray against stuff. Yeah, that's okay. They ready for me to stop this slide. Come on, single town. I better hit some amens. Thank you. Pray, pray against insecurity, which causes you to push yourself. Pray against Jezebel that causes you to feel that you don't need a man or can only be with one that you can control. You got to pray against this stuff. Amen. You going to get so sick of a weak man. Old jive. Rubber band man. That's what he is. He is stretching any direction you pull him. He's the rubber band man. Pray, pray against competition. Don't be competing in here. Uh-oh. Don't you be competing in here. Pray against competition and envy and jealousy and sabotage that makes you discontent with your life in comparison to others. I got to go to the scripture because they ain't feeling what I'm saying, Stacy. So 1 Corinthians 7 and 34, there is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit that's the command to the single woman break that command I can't guarantee you how it's going to turn out can I keep going that was a rough slide for somebody Cheering! Listen, this is how you pray for you. Don't pray for God to bless your children with riches, fame, and superficial things. Amen. Stop trying to live vicariously through your children. Pushing your children to make you look good and help you get a check. Don't. You don't pray that stuff. That's witchcraft. You're trying to manipulate your children. No, nope, you pray that they will be saved. That's the only prayer you pray. Pray your children be saved. Pray that they be saved. Saved. Pray that they be saved. Amen. Pray for the salvation of your seed and allow God to choose their tax brackets. Amen. It ain't really your business. How they want to live and how they... Amen. You go. Ooh, the hand claps. 
If they can be content with little, then they will stay saved with more. I know I'm preaching. I, this, this message, and I knew it was going to do this too. I knew it was just busting folk up, change some folks' mind. It ain't worth the barbecue. The barbecue was good, but it wasn't that good. I won't be back until next year. Pray against every demonic attack of the enemy on their lives and against their assignment. Pray that they be good husbands and good wives. You speak that in prayer? Pray for your daughter to be a good wife. You be a good wife. She's only six. When she gets older, she's going to be a good wife. I'm speaking it now. Speak it to your son. Create those expectations because those are godly expectations. We don't speak worldly expectations over our children. Oh, he's going to run the football better than anybody that played for the Patriots. In Jesus' name, I see a little Patriot while I'm praying. I see a little man crouched. And I just... You better pray that he be a good husband. Amen. Pray that they be good husbands and good wives. Amen. Amen. Don't be pushing her in debt. So she got to get a certain dude that can handle all that debt. You better pray that she be a good wife and set her up to be one. Oh, somebody is in the wrong church today. And that's okay. That they have success in the creation roles that God deemed for his creation. Raise them up right and they will be right. This is a promise from God. Yeah. Even in dysfunctional upbringings. Baby mama, baby daddy, whatever the case. God can work on your behalf if you are steadfast and willing to give yourself up for them. Are you willing to give yourself up for them? Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not what? Depart. Out of wedlock, children. I didn't forget about you. Every situation is an ideal, especially in 2022. Don't pray for God to rule on your behalf when it comes to children that are victims of divorce, unmarried parents, and stepchildren. Instead, pray for God to rule on behalf of the children. Yeah. Ooh, what's best for the children? Maybe staying with you ain't best for the children. Maybe that young boy got to spend more time with his daddy. No matter how much you hate him for not picking you. Or you left him and now you want him back, but he got somebody else. Ooh, some folk don't like me, baby. That's okay. But you preach it. Thank you. Okay. See, that's why I to sit right in the cut. <laughs> Children should not be used as leverage, bargaining chips, or payback. God understands this function, and He can work through it. You don't think He does? Moses was adopted and raised in a pagan godless family and he eventually became a type of Christ for God's people so never get look at somebody say never give up never give up on the children being stabilized and blessed in these situations but make sure you are not adding insult to injury when working through the differences sometimes it's you oh they just don't know how to treat I don't like the way they live over there they, my, my children just can't stay if that's his daddy that's his mama and your, your upbringing was not deal either it's okay boy the devil tried everything to stop this message didn't he, didn't he elder didn't he yeah cause he knew once you start praying this stuff stuff's gonna happen pray for God to give you a big picture spirit and not a petty one Big picture. I got to do this for the big picture. I got to spend the next 10 years focused on this and not myself for the big picture. After
after the 10 years, I'm good. But I got to do this 10 years because of the mistakes I made, the decisions I made. Thank you, Matt. I'm going to bring a mic to the folk that ain't scared to clap. Pray against anger, revenge, malice, and seditious behaviors that damage the children in the process. You pray against it, whether it's them doing it or you doing it. Because I know you're mad. Of course you're angry. But you can't take it out on the children. Pray for the other parent. Somebody's mouth just velcroed shut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need deliverance. You're going to come up late. I mean, mouth just zip shut when I said that. Pray for the other parent. But you got to pray for them because that's the parent of your child. Y'all in it together. <laughs> Believe God for them doing right by the children. Luke 1 and 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You got to believe that. That God's going to turn the hearts of the fathers. And you pray this scripture. Lord, turn the heart of his father to his child. Don't make it worse. Lord, he ain't no good. Oh God, he don't spend nothing. How you doing? How's that? Oh, he's, he's sorry. He don't ever come around. He don't. No, you pray. God, turn his heart to his children. Because if you pray scripture, you'll get results. That's okay. Let me hear him get through this. Boy, this message is hard for somebody. This is hard. Careers. Now, everybody, watch everybody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is the part I was waiting on. Three, ba, 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 ba. Don't pray for God to bless your decision to enter a career field. Rather, pray for God's plan for your life and what he wants you to be. How about that? So before you do all of that, only God knows the future. He can direct us accordingly. So we must put our total trust in him and receive what? confirmation before we acquire debt and spend time getting educated in that field Amen. you in debt you spend all this money and then you get to doing it and find out that wasn't it it's exceedingly difficult to change the direction of a cruise ship when a cruise ship start going they got to start turning 15 minutes before it's time to turn because it's a cruise ship. You know how big that is? But a small boat can change directions quickly and intentionally. So in its infancy in your heart, you seek God then. Because then you can make the decisions that God is telling you to make. And you don't have to consider the big cruise ship that you created. That's okay. That's okay. Because I might say, consult God first. Pray for God to show you what he wants of you. Work in the meantime. Work in the meantime. That don't mean that's it. But that's bringing some money. Do that. But trust him for not only direction, but for means and emotional support as well. Because when it's God, he'll start bringing people into your life. He'll bring you a boondini. You need somebody pushing you, encouraging you, even when it hurts. Dude, you look too hard on me. Good! Because I'm trying to get the best out of you. You don't run from correction. God will get you there if you trust him. Proverbs 3 and 6. And how many of you ways? How many of you ways? In all thy ways do what? And he's going to do what? Direct the path. Work. It's different from career. 
Work is work. Commanded by God to all men for what went down in the garden. There is no pass to not work. It's commanded by God that men work. From the sweat of their brow, you got to be doing something that makes you sweat. Work. Don't pray, Lord, find me a job. That's a dumb prayer. Lord, find me a job in Jesus' name. Lord, like, well, what can you do? I mean, you know you made me. You know all my insides. So find something that match up with that. God, like, but please, I ain't talking to you no more. Don't pray that. That's lazy prayer. Instead, pray, Lord, bless the work of my now, let me stop. Men in here, how many of y'all prayed that prayer when I told you to and it worked for you to get a good, good, look at that. That prayer works. That prayer works. You know why it works? Because it was the devil that said that. When he came and said, I need to get Job, Lord. And no, the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, yeah, but he got his heads around him and You've blessed the work of his hands. When I, when I read that, I was like, oh, that's it. That's it. If the devil acknowledged that, that meant he couldn't do nothing to his possessions because God had blessed the work of his hands. So I don't just need a job. I need blessed hands. I need God to bless my, look at somebody say, bless my hands, Lord. <laughs> The work of your hands will always be adequate for the provision you need. Yeah. It comes from the work of your hands. Yeah. Adam was created adequately to handle the load of naming animals. There was no lack in him to do the job. He was created adequately. Yes. We must pray for God to give us that same idemic provision in our hands yeah. so that the work we do is sufficient and providing our needs. Amen. This way, God gets all the credit for providing for us as his word has stated. Bless the work of my hands. Hands blessed. Get paid. Thank you, God. Amen. And you better break him off of peace. That's, that's a few slides. We'll, we'll get there. But God gets all the credit. So here's what you pray. God bless the work of my hands so that all I receive will be credited to you. Yeah. You are my provider and only you can provide all of my needs. So my faith is in you to bless me through my labor so that I can have all that I need. Yeah. Money. Who? Next slide. Money. Money. How many of you like money? Somebody, oh no, that's the root of all evil. No, it's not. I said like money, not love money. The love of money is the root of all evil. But I likes it. Any opportunity, I can make some money. I likes money don't pray for money this ain't sitting right with somebody I thought I was supposed to not only pray for money but pray to money money cometh dollar dollar right there come right now Ooh. that's ignorance and foolishness no, you don't pray for money because there's no scripture in the Bible where it tells you to. I don't care what the visiting prophet said. You don't pray for no money. Don't ask God for more money. Uh-oh. Now we're going to pray God bless us to finish this parking lot in Jesus' name. Give us the money we need to pave this parking lot because these rocks is cutting up our ties. Lord, help us. Lord. You shouldn't have started on that project. Every vision requires provision. It's not a vision without provision. You should have waited till you had the provision and then started working on the vision. 
You don't pray for money. And you don't ask God for more money. You know, your church, even if you're a pastor, your church is going to sustain itself and give you what you should be spending. Anything you spending outside of what people are giving ain't yours. So that means your vision wasn't. Can I preach in here? Yeah. We wouldn't have done the picnic if we had to, if we couldn't afford to pay for it. We're getting ready to do this expansion project in here. We ain't finna have no uh, uh, thermometer in the corner. <laughs> we don't, we're not raising money. You know how we know it's time to expand? Wait, you know how we know it's time to expand the church? Because we got the money to. Yeah. I don't care if folks was in here sitting three deep in one chair. If we ain't got the money, they don't have to sit. <laughs> They gonna be set like that. We know it's time to expand because we can. Oh, folk don't like that kind of gospel. Yeah, somebody like, well, that means I don't have to give no more. Oh, that's your house and your raggedy living. You gonna live sitting in here getting this word, this rich word, and not contributing. And that's you. Amen. Don't you pray for more money? Don't pray for houses, cars, etc. Now you pray when it's time to look for a house. You might be praying for the best deal and that kind of thing. But don't be praying for looking for a house and you ain't got looking for house money. You're wasting time. I had so much money in the bank. I was just saving everything I got on the road. Elder. I just put it in the bank, put it in the bank. We was living in, in, in a 1,500-square-foot house. My mama, my wife, Vicky, and Landon. We all in, just in the house, just crying. And then I found out she was pregnant with Jonathan. And I'm still ain't, I still ain't going nowhere. I'm like, well, shoot, you know, we just have to make a little room. We can, we can knock this wall. Out. And the Lord spoke to me and said, go get a house. What you think your money in the bank is for? Yeah, and that's how I knew it was time. So then I started praying for the house that we needed or whatever to, to you know, handle our needs now and in the future. Amen. Amen. And I started praying then, but I wasn't praying just, Lord, give me a house, give me a house, and I didn't have the money to get the house. I need to be praying something else. How about, Lord, bless us in the space we're in right now so we can all get along, love each other, and get the devil out of here. Quit going in the back and smoking cigars and weed and having these up. Amen. Yeah. Lord, get me away from these neighbors. Lord, are you smoking with them? <laughs> no, don't pray for houses, cars, none of that. Be going to God, Lord, I think I need a better whip. They don't understand you. Stop that. A car is a luxury. That's right. Don't do that. Instead, do what? Y'all don't know how to preach anything else but the Bible. Amen. Some of y'all, your finances are screwed up because you won't give. You won't give consistently. You break God off a piece, you get in a piece. And you don't have no peace. Bible tells you that money is not received through prayer, but through men. You must give in order to receive. Be faithful, giving with little, and you will be blessed with more. Giving is the key. Y'all, this is all scripture. Ooh, so don't get mad. You can leave this church, go to another one. The scripture don't change. Amen. Giving is the key if you want money. Be faithful to give to your fellowship. Give to others in need. Like we did yesterday in our swap. Have our swap, man. We, and we give good stuff. 
I pick good stuff. I'm not giving them trash. I keep the trash and I give that some do something else with that. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give them the best stuff. Stuff that I still want is what I give. My wife will tell you it's stuff I still want. It ain't always what I help do. I can't fit that no more. That's, no. That's how you get blessed. Pray against asking for things to show off or feel better about yourself. Pray against the spirit of the world causing you to covet and get into debt. Luke 6 and 38. Give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall who? Shall who? So you're praying to God, but God is saying no men is going to give it into your bosom. Health, don't pray for healing while refusing to properly care for yourself. You know, see, you praying, oh God, all of these heart palpitations and these heart, my heart, God, it just feel like this goes stop. You kneeling over a box of chicken from Williams. You can't pray against diabetes without changing your diet. But the prayer ain't gonna work. You can't pray against heart disease if you don't exercise. You can't pray against cancer and other chronic illnesses if you don't get sleep or stress all the time. In order for healing prayers to work, you must commit to doing your part. Your body is God's temple and it will be in the condition that you keep it in. Although God is a healer, we must be diligent in caring for our bodies. So pray against bad familiar eating habits. Ain't nothing running in your family. Oh yeah, hot blood pressure, diabetes, they're all running in my family. That's because y'all all eat every Sunday at Big Mama's house. That's not hereditary. I don't run through the bloodline. That's not the truth. It's impossible. If you eat better and act better than they did, you're going to get a better result. We've been passing these recipes down for centuries. Well, y'all need to stop. Don't pass it to another person. Kill that recipe. Burn that book. Burn that scroll. It's an old scroll from the slavery days. This is the best cornbread. You got to put on gloves to eat it. It's so greasy. Burn that recipe. Don't let it kill another family member. We ain't going to another funeral behind this corner. <laughs> I gotta stop. That's it. <laughs> Pray against substance abuse, including sugar and salt. Look at somebody. See, you done, you done defeated. Crack and cigarettes. <laughs> but the devil done, he done morphed, morphed it to the, he done slid on the dinner table. He ain't hit the crack no more. He's in the cake. <laughs> ain't crack, it's cake. <laughs> that's it. Okay, that's it. This, this, that. Yeah. You done repeat. You done made it past the liquor, just getting drunk. Oh, that's like God delivered me. But if a cake show up, you get to shake. Okay. That's, that's it. Sugar and salt. Pray against emotional eating. When you don't feel good about yourself, you eat. Don't do that. Pray against insomnia. Night visitors, incubus, succubus, all of that. Yeah. Guilt, shame, stuff keeping you up at night because lack of sleep makes you unhealthy. Yeah. Third John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Mental health. Don't ask God to just take depression, anxiety, and insomnia away. Don't do that. Lord, just take it away from me. Lord, help me. No, no, no but rather pray against the source of them. You gotta find out why you're depressed, why you got anxiety and insomnia. 
What am I carrying, Lord, that is too heavy? What am I worried about that I cannot change? What are others doing that affect the way I feel? Pray for God to reveal our witchcraft manipulation, word curses, and demonic spirits that are attacking your peace and making your life harder. As God reveals, you make the necessary changes. But then you got to pray for grace and strength to remove even the toughest obstacles that bring you trouble. You might be in love with trouble. So you need grace. God help me. Rebuke the devil. Cast him out. Remove his placeholders and stronghold. This is how you pray against emotional and mental health issues. Philippians 4 and 6. Don't be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your what? Requests be made known. Praying for others. Instead of praying God save everyone, pray for God to save those. I, I, people, people send me messages. Send me a whole crazy video about Kanye. Oh yeah, well we pray for our church. We all got together and prayed for him. Did anybody in the church know him? Oh no, but, oh, but we just want God to. What about people in your church? What about people on your street? people you know look you can't get the hand clap we're supposed to pray for everybody that bible don't say that the internet <laughs> so instead of god save everyone pray for god to save those that you know the internet social media tv movies and entertainment as a whole will cause us to focus on people that are celebrities these people seem to warn our prayers more than the people in our own families they are so high and lifted up that we feel we should get them in a better state so they can help more people. But God doesn't see them that way. He has no respect of persons. So praying for others becomes more effective when we focus on those we know and are around. If everyone did this, everyone would get prayed for. So don't pray broadly about things that are out of reach more than you pray focused on the people that can change around you. Pray for them to see the light and receive the truth of the gospel of Jesus. Call out names and be direct. Especially those that you do not like or those that hate you. Call the name. Lord, every time I call a name, a cuss word manifests. Call a name till you stop cussing. Call a name till you love them. James 5 and 16, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Leaders, this last one. Instead of praying, Lord, kill this one and remove this one. That's what they pray about me, some folks. Kill him, Lord. Oh, I saw him die. This is how you going to die. They tell me that all the time. I get emails all the time. Lord, kill this one and remove this one. So instead of doing that, pray to God to rest their hearts and minds so that while in position, they can do what's best for God's people and not the enemy. Oh, this is so important what I'm about to say. Oh, somebody's not going to be able to handle it. But God puts people in position. And he also allows some that are not with him to bring judgment and repentance to his people. Yeah. Biden is in office because pe God's people are crazy right now. That's why Biden is in office. Trump was in office because the people crazy. <laughs> we do not know the mind of God. So we must pray the will of God. In every instance, we should pray for God to be merciful toward us. Pray that whoever is in office would be influenced by the power of God and not the power of darkness. Pray against evil agendas and satanic policies, but never pray death upon those that are against us. First Timothy 2 and 1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayer, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all, how many men? All men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Yeah. Scripture. Yeah. Summary. Man, this was good right here. 
Don't pray for the cowboys either. <laughs> Many of our prayers go unanswered because they are not properly stated. God does know our intentions. And many times he gives us grace. But as we mature, this is the key, we must become fervent in prayer. As you mature, the devils, the demons, and warfare matures. Yeah, the attacks get smarter and harder. So you have to mature. You can't be praying, now nah, lay me down to sleep. Laying hands on folk. You're not a kid anymore. Effectual, which means effective, and fervent, which means intensified prayers, will get answers. And God will, God's will can be accomplished through us. Yes. Pray the right thing, and you will what? Get the right, get the right results. Yes. Matthew 6 and 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, that's all they're going to get. I ain't doing nothing for them. That's all they're going to get. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So you don't have to make a lot of noise. You can go in your closet. Now, some of the church folk took this and twisted it, meaning that you got to pray so the devil can't hear you because you don't want the devil to know what you're saying. I want him to know what I'm saying. I want him to know everything I'm saying. Please. He ain't got the power to, do, to stop your prayer from God. But when thou prayest, so enter into thy closet. But when ye pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Your prayer don't have to be an hour. Especially if you're just making up stuff to stay down there. Timing yourself. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. Everyone stand to your feet. Man, this was a good message. Amen. It blessed me. I was going to split it up in a series, but I was like, nah, this needs to be all in one. Amen. We need every bit of it. Amen. Prayer life under attack. Come up here, we're going to pray and trust God. Believe God. Prayer life. Prayer. I need to connect with God. I got some stuff that I got to connect with him about. Can't have nothing in the way. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Connection. I'm going to connect with him. I got something big in front of him. I need to connect. The enemy is doing everything possible to block that connection. Hallelujah. 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 We all go through those periods. Don't think you backslidden and ain't saved no more because you went through a little slump. And got a little inconsistent with your prayer life and those kind of things. Life happens. But you got to get back in there. That's right, that's right. You got to pray. That's right. That's right. Then you got to pray to pray. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you got to keep it up. Yes. Do not cease. Pray without ceasing. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For this kind of word in this kind of hour. Thank you, Lord, for this kind of truth in this hour. And though the enemy tried to stop this message, tried to just throw everything he could at me to make me show the interview that I did instead of preach this message. Father God, your word has to be spoken. Your truth saves us. Your truth changes us. Your truth guards us and protects us. Your truth, Father God makes us free so we thank you lord for this message thank you god for the instruction though it may have hurt though it may have hit us though it may have stung whatever the case we thank you for the truth so help us father god to take this truth and transform our prayer lives 
just this document we'll start here and just go through each one and pray these things and we'll pray until we are praying God will pray and not cease believe you for what we're asking for trust and believe that it will be done we won't listen to the enemy we won't follow his plan we won't listen to his whispers but father God we're going to take this truth and run with it so help us God everyone lift your hands help us father God in our prayer life in our prayer time help us to make time help us father God to make time for you help us God to put aside silly things set the phone down turn it off turn the TV off father God turn the movies off turn, father God just help us to get away and get close to you and find out what you want from us so that our way will be made easy our burdens will be made light you said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest so father God we believe that right now our prayer life will be different from this day forward and we'll know that you hear us when we ask in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray amen come on put your hands together and thank him the truth made you free hallelujah look at somebody and say I'm free the truth has made me free if you're on this altar just hug somebody and tell them I'm praying for you what's your name ask them their name give me your name because I'm going to call your name out in my newfound prayer life in my closet I'll call your name out I'll remember your face and I'll be praying for you hallelujah 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 